The boy slowly turned his head, and a huge shark suddenly rushed at the steel glass. The healthy boy not only did not run but unconsciously put his hand on the glass. In the next moment, the huge shark suddenly calmed down. This scene stunned everyone present there. When the boy turned around, his originally normal eyes suddenly turned yellow, and all the sea creatures behind him turned to gather around and bow down to him respectfully. On a stormy rainy night, he discovered a severely injured blonde woman on the beach. His father took her home for treatment, but realized she was acting strangely. The girl suddenly grabbed him and could easily lift him up. When she saw the sea creatures on TV, she destroyed it with a trident, but he was not scared and instead brought her a cup of hot tea to show goodwill to the mysterious woman. In the conversation, he learned that she was the Queen of Atlantis, who came from the deep sea to escape an arranged political marriage. The two fell desperately in love, falling into a romantic affair that transcended racial boundaries. But happiness did not last long. When Arthur was three years old, the wall of the house exploded and a group of soldiers in white armor broke in by order to catch the queen. But they were easily defeated by the queen. But she knew her people would not give up. To protect her husband and child, the queen painfully said goodbye to his father, promising to reunite when the sun rises. Ever since then, every day when the sun rose, his father would stand on the beach waiting for the queen's return. And Arthur has now grown up, the Atlantean blood flowing in him giving him extraordinary strength. One day, a group of pirates targeted a submarine. They wore black armor, stormed into the submarine, shooting dead all the sailors. Just when they thought they had succeeded, the submarine suddenly shook violently and the pressure under the hull surged dramatically. Then a loud bang sounded, and the submarine was easily pushed out of the water. The one who appeared was the brave and righteous Arthur. The pirates immediately attacked Arthur. Although constantly shot, Arthur held up a steel shield to block the bullets, then easily defeated them. At this point, Arthur's strength had far surpassed ordinary people, and regular weapons could not harm him. The weak pirates were no match for Arthur. A pirate also wanted to test his strength against Arthur, but found he only hurt himself. Just then a granat came, blowing Arthur far away. The pirate father and son thought they had won but did not notice Arthur had stood up, completely unharmed. He pulled out an iron pipe, nailing it right into the hull, pinning the pirate father there. Seawater gushed into the hull. The son pirate begged Arthur to save his father but Arthur left them behind. Arthur's act of saving the submarine was quickly reported by the media, and everyone praised him as the ocean hero. However, right on that day, as Arthur was driving his father on the seaside road, a sea swell suddenly rose high into huge waves, flipping over a hundred-meter yacht. The waves rushed in with terrifying speed, swallowing Arthur and his father. With his special strength, Arthur struggled underwater looking for his father, but his vision was hindered by polluted waste in the water. Just then, a red-haired girl used her special powers to tear open the water layer to find Arthur's father in the car. Arthur immediately pulled his father out, but he had stopped breathing. The girl used her power to remove the water from the old man's lungs, saving his life. When everything calmed down again, the whole country witnessed an unprecedented scene. Waste generated by humans over many years was piled onto land. But what humankind did not know was that in the deep abyss of the ocean, in an area never explored, lied another advanced civilization. They had massive bodies, could freely breathe underwater, and rode giant creatures. And their king was plotting to conquer the world, ORM, Arthur's half-brother from the same mother. The recent tidal wave was a warning he sent to humans. Suddenly a submarine appeared, randomly shooting at this area. ORM immediately rode a creature, rushed straight to the submarine and cut it in half with his trident, ending the attack. The assault made the other kings change their minds, agreeing to give ORM the power of the Seven Kingdoms so he could attack the mainland. However, what he did not know was that all the events that had just happened were intricately orchestrated by ORM in a scheme to help him conquer the world. After the two kings left, ORM had paid the pirates a large bonus. The submarine attack earlier was also staged by ORM and the pirates acted to gain the king's trust. The reason the princess sought out Arthur was also in the hope that he could return to the ocean to stop ORM from starting a war. They went to see Vulko. 
He said the only way to stop ORM's crazy plot was to find the lost golden trident of the city of Atlantis. He was the greatest weaponsmith in history and also the only one who dared to use Poseidon's cold iron to forge a golden trident for the fourth ruler of Atlantis. Legend has it that this trident contained the power to rule the oceans. Thanks to its power, the king of Atlantis succeeded in conquering the world and establishing his own dynasty. At a time when the whole world still thought the Earth was not spherical, the King of Atlantis led his people into a technological age. The King of Atlantis intended to extract the power of the sea god from the trident. This angered the gods and they punished the whole of Atlantis. All advanced technology was destroyed instantly. The ground also began to collapse. People did not have time to escape. The country that had just stepped into the civilization was swallowed up by the ocean. Atlantis IV disappeared completely that day. Thanks to the protection of the trident, part of the nation was purified into superior beings that could breathe underwater and had fish bodies. The king of Atlantis exiled himself in the darkness for the rest of his life. Since then, no one has seen him or his golden trident. 100 years later, the fourth Atlantis survivors living under the sea had found an ancient record. The Prime Minister gave it to Arthur, allowing him to search for the Golden Trident of the Atlantean King through this ancient record, using its power to prevent the War of ORM. However, just as everyone was discussing the next plan, suddenly a cannonball attack struck them. ORM's dispatched army had grasped Arthur's location. The Princess and Prime Minister could not reveal their identities and were forced to hide. Meanwhile, Arthur, as the fourth heir of Atlantis, faced the heavily armed Deep Sea Army without any fear. However, outnumbered, Arthur was knocked out by an unexpected punch from the Super Warrior. When he woke up, he found himself being brought to the courtroom, with four limbs heavily chained and facing ORM, the brother of his foster father. ORM wore golden armor, looked down at Arthur and began to mercilessly mock him, saying he was the shame of the Sea People. Arthur became furious and challenged ORM to decide who deserved to be king of the sea world. When the two stepped onto the stage with their tridents pointing at each other, the official battle began. ORM jumped up and attacked first. He swung his trident wildly, not giving Arthur any chance to breathe. Facing ORM's deadly attacks, Arthur could only try his best to defend. Even the weapon left by his mother was ruthlessly smashed by ORM. As ORM prepared to unleash a decisive blow, Mera suddenly rushed forward, pushing ORM off the stage and quickly fleeing amidst the chaos. Arthur was seriously injured, but hearing ORM's roar, the entire navy began chasing him and Mera, firing missiles at them. The two had to jump into the sea to escape. To avoid the pursuit of ORM's army, Arthur used his special ability to call for help from whales. The whales responded to the signal and opened their mouths to provide an excellent shelter for the two. They finally escaped from the pursuit of ORM's army. It turned out that to stop ORM's war plan, they had to obtain the legendary golden trident. So they followed the map to the Sahara Desert, then accidentally fell into a deep pit in the desert. After a dangerous expedition, they discovered that they had reached their destination, the site of the lost seven Atlantis nations relics. Mera took her mysterious potion, then took a drop of sweat from Arthur's body and added it to the mixture. The mechanism was instantly activated. Accompanying the rotation of the giant gears, an image of the King of Atlantis projected from the device in the center, indicating that the power of the abyss within this trident would be unimaginable if it fell into the wrong hands. To obtain this divine weapon, one had to go to the end of the world, the dark sea and prove one's worth before the trident. When the image disappeared, leaving only a leather map for the two, guiding them to Sicily Island. Following the guidance of the King of Atlantis, they found the coordinates of the Golden Trident. Just as everything seemed to be going smoothly, a cannonball suddenly attacked the two. The arch nemesis of the Sea King had obtained a high-tech laser gun from the deep sea. Just by adding a bowl of water, it could instantly transform into an electronic energy weapon with enough power to flatten a mountain. The pirate who used to raid and kill everywhere had also completely turned into one of the Sea King's arch-rivals, Manta, after upgrading all the equipment provided by ORM. He immediately went after Arthur to avenge his father's death. When Arthur endured the lethal laser beam shot by the opponent, he realized that his supposedly invincible skin had been severely burned. Mera wanted to help but was blocked by several super-soldiers instantly. 
Mera took out an ancient weapon and utilized a series of perfect maneuvers, defeating three soldiers right away. Meanwhile, the unarmed Arthur fell into panic as he was battered by the heavily armed Manta without any room for resistance. Manta shot the eye laser again, knocking Arthur down the cliff. He chased after and fiercely attacked Arthur. This time, Manta swore to take Arthur's life. He charged straight at Arthur, butting him dozens of meters away, then shot another lethal laser beam, blasting Arthur. Arthur fell heavily to the ground. Disregarding his own wounds, Arthur used his body to shield the little girl who nearly died. To avoid casualties, Arthur made great efforts to rescue people despite his serious injuries. At that time, Manta landed and used a laser whip to hit Arthur once again. And during the pain, Arthur grabbed the laser whip then pulled Manta closer to deliver a heavy punch that sent him tumbling. Seeing he was no match for Arthur at close range, Manta flew up, attempting his old trick, but was hit in the head by a rock thrown by Arthur and fell into the abyss. Thinking the battle would end with Manta's death, they didn't expect the number of super soldiers on the enemy's side to increase more and more. In an instant, almost all buildings in the town were destroyed by them. Thanks to her agile skills allowing continuous maneuvering to avoid strikes, Mera was eventually blasted by a missile. In grave danger, Mera react quickly to take off a soldier's mask. The underwater soldiers couldn't adapt to air on land so they had to jump into toilet bowls to breathe. Seeing more enemies still deploying, Mera looked around and saw wine bottles, from which she devised a new plan. Mera shouted loudly, shattering all wine bottles, then used her unique magic to turn the wine into sharp spears. Although they won this fight, Arthur was heavily wounded and completely blacked out. When he woke up, he found himself in the middle of the ocean with healed wounds. They continued their journey to the final location of the Golden Trident. But waiting for them were countless monstrous creatures, the inhabitants of the deep sea who had been purified into feral mare people. Extremely ferocious by nature after living in the depths for lifetimes, any intruder to their territory would be ruthlessly massacred without mercy. Mera grabbed a spear and landed the first strike, taking out two creatures at once. Arthur waited for an opening, seizing a rope to take down another group. Initially, these ten monsters were quite easy to handle for them both, but when the whole horde of mare people swarmed onto the ship, they realized the creatures had reproduced to an unstoppable level. However, they seemed to share a common weakness, fear of light. The two took advantage of this weakness to escape, jumping into the endless deep sea abyss. Thousands of mare people persistently chased after them like swarms of locusts. Arthur and Mera held flashlights, walking in the dark waters with mare people always waiting for a chance to attack. In the nick of time they found a cave deep under the seafloor. Going through the narrow rock crevice, they discovered a continuously thunderstorming sea. The intense lightning kept the mare people from approaching. To find the golden trident, they resolutely made way through the storm despite knowing how dangerous it was. Finally, the strong currents separated them, leaving Mera to pass out and nearly become food for a sea dragon. Luckily, someone appeared to fight off the dragon and saved Mera. Upon waking up, Mera found herself in the Dark Sea, the legendary place deep in the Earth's core where drifting crystal islands and long extinct dinosaurs were unique scenery. When the mystery person took off the mask, Mera recognized her as the Queen of Atlantis, Arthur's mother who had been lost over 20 years. Under the mother's guidance, Arthur crossed the waterfall behind thick forests and discovered another underwater world. There Arthur finally saw the legend, the man holding the golden trident with abyssal power. But to obtain the divine weapon, he first had to defeat the gigantic prehistoric monster guarding the place. As Arthur was about to take the trident, the beast flung him far away. Realizing Arthur did not have pure Atlantean blood, it became furious and gave him a thrashing. When it was about to deliver the final blow, Arthur suddenly used his unique ability to converse with marine creatures. The creature was totally surprised and stopped. Since the passing of the King of Atlantis, it had not met anyone who could communicate with it like that. The beast decided to put aside its prejudice and give Arthur a chance to prove his worth and take the trident. Arthur stepped in front of the Atlantean King, reaching out to grab the Golden Trident. The moment his pupils turned golden, the Golden Trident containing the power of the ocean depths also belonged to him. Battle armor clung to Arthur's body, a powerful surge of ocean energy suddenly erupted. As he held the Golden Trident stepping out of the waterfall, the golden armor on him had fully proven that he had officially become the fourth Atlantean King. 
At the same time, his brother ORM had launched an attack on the Brine Tribe in an attempt to dominate the entire ocean and then conquer the Earth. However, the Brine Tribe King suddenly refused to bow before ORM. He led a hundred thousand prawn soldiers, the Crab General fought ORM in a battle against invasion. For a while, the entire abyss was filled with crab claws. ORM's legion launched an offensive against the Brine Tribe. ORM's superior armed forces quickly destroyed the tribe's defenses. But the Brine fought back, sending giant crabs to counterattack. The fierce battle entered a critical life and death stage as the Brine soldiers threw fireballs, destroying ORM's warships. ORM angrily stormed into the enemy's rear base, swinging his trident, cutting off the right arm of the Brine tribe leader who was commanding. But nonetheless, the Crab King of the tribe remained staunchly resilient. Just as ORM was about to finish off his opponent, the seabed erupted with a strong energy surge, blasting ORM hundreds of meters away. Next, an octopus creature appeared, erupting magma between the armies. As it emerged from the seabed, everyone realized it was the monster guarding the Atlantis King, now willingly acting as Arthur's vehicle. With a casual wave, he easily destroyed two warships. But ORM ordered his troops to attack with all their might to no avail against the monster. Seeing creatures continuously rushing to their death, Arthur raised the golden trident high, commanding the sea creatures to submit to him. To avoid further loss of life, Arthur charged straight into the battle, followed by the ferocious abyssal army protecting their ocean king. As ORM was about to finish off his opponent, the seafloor suddenly erupted with a powerful surge of energy that sent ORM flying back hundreds of meters. Next, an octopus-like creature appeared, causing lava to erupt between the two armies. As the creature rose from the seafloor, everyone realized it was the prehistoric monster that protected the King of Atlantis, now willingly serving as a vehicle for Arthur. With a simple wave of his hand, he destroyed two gigantic warships. But ORM did not give up, ordering his troops to attack with all their might, though their bullets could not harm the monster. ORM still refused to lose. He immediately jumped at Arthur but was knocked back. Next, Arthur leaped forward, smashing ORM's trident. He turned around, aiming the trident at ORM's neck, proving he had won. The queen appeared, advising ORM to lay down arms, saying that she loved both her sons dearly. At this point, Arthur was recognized as the king of Atlantis, having unified the tribes. Arthur raised the golden trident to the sky, proving he was the king of the ocean. The next morning, Arthur's father walked along the seashore unexpectedly meeting his wife after many years of separation. The two immediately embraced each other with joyful smiles.